Yeah, so I'm just gonna run you guys through what my process is like. Uh, I don't think it's too new what I'm doing. I, I mean, maybe, you know, I, uh, I happen to have a lot of different weird proclivities. Here's the cover to the book. And to give you an idea of how things aren't very new, but uh, what my process sort of starts or how it, how it moves, um, this, from the cover, you can get almost like a, uh, a microcosm of, of what happens, how my comics are made. Uh, I'm usually inspired by something or something that's shaped the way I think about uh, language and images smashes into something else and then out of it, you know, comes an image or a story or a narrative. And it's usually shaped by my own experiences. A couple of guys that, you know, influence the way I, I do my art you know, are um, Prince Paul and Charlie Parker. And uh, Charlie Parker, um, he became, you know, like he's, he's one of the saints of bebop. And, you know, like one of the things that's great about bebop is it takes this language and uh, it takes an old language. It took like hot jazz and then it, it had this way of um, sampling. Like to me, it's kind of like the great grandfather of sampling, like taking something and using that something to say something beyond what you're even saying. So like, you know, when, when he riffs on one thing, like in the middle of his, his uh, improvisation, like you're connected to something completely different, like a, a legacy, an older, an older narrative, and that informs what he's doing. So that's kind of, you know, my first experience with this was with Prince Paul, um, with his, his De La Soul work and, you know, he, he makes the records talk. So for my project, I wanted to make my character speak. And, you know, I'm going to write a little bit of something, but, like, you know, I put Shakespeare in there because, like, maybe they won't buy my book, but, like, who's going to shit on Shakespeare? I mean, like, I mean, it's <laughs> Shakespeare. You know. you know, I was interested in the ghost character Petruchio. So I was like, well, you know, I don't know, depending on uh, whose criticism of whatever folio, like, Petruchio has, it means, you know, his absence and his arrival and the ghost character mean different things. So I was like, yo, well, I'm going to use Petruchio. Like, fuck it. And at first, he was there from the beginning. But then uh, my own sort of life experience uh, kind of informed what I chose to do with the character, which was growing up, uh, I had a, my cousin from a very young age. He got into a lot of trouble uh, in the streets. So... After a while, you know, he went away. And like, as you get a little bit older, you're like, oh, well, he went to jail. And then like, you know, or juvie, and then juvie life. But I thought about how much can a person's absence really affect another character. So this is before I decided to take Petruchio out. Petruchio is there with the cornrows. And you can see how my process, uh, how it moves along here. One of the things that's bugged out about comics is everyone kind of turns in their own type of script. So maybe I'm kind of illuminating the process. Um, it's pretty sophisticated. It's not like film, it's not like animation, and everyone breaks down language in a different way. As I was working, I thought, well, um, I don't know how honest this is. Like, I never, you know, this isn't what my experience as a kid was, even though I wasn't here, I was in Washington, D.C. Like, what was it like when I came home from private school and I met my friends, like, where were they? And what, and what about the language in New York City? So I threw it in the trash, and I started over after I colored it, partially. <laughs> but this is the next step. Um, after I finish drawing everything, uh, and after I do all of my corrections, I send my script and my final pages off to a letterer. And if you noticed before, like, I... I place bubbles, because even the bubbles take up an important part of the visual space. And then, if you're lucky, you have someone like uh, my letterer, Jared, and he, he balances the space with the, with the bubbles. And what you'll see now is kind of like what his work looks like, what his notes look like. The script process is brutal sometimes, and uh, in comics, my editors weren't familiar with Elizabethan English hip-hop, post-punk, or any of that. So it's like a lot of it fell on me to edit myself. So I made a lot of mistakes. And, um, but I kept 
I carried on. And that's the story of comics.